Alrighty, everybody, welcome to the EKG of the week. My name is Reed, and uh, if you like this content, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more. So let's go and get started. So this is an interesting EKG, as you can tell, it looks all over the place. So if I just start here at the bottom, we don't get a full rhythm trip, but I'm gonna just count off. I see I got this narrow QRS, funky QRS, narrow QRS. Funky, funky, narrow, funky, narrow, funky, narrow, funky, funky. And I've got a couple of narrows in a row. So it's all over the place. It seems like these narrow QRSs are the normal QRSs. You can see they do, if you look up here at lead two, those narrow QRSs, they do have P waves before them that conduct. And if you look at the P waves that conduct before our narrow QRSs, if I look in lead one, I see this P wave is upright in lead one. If I go to a normal QRS in AVF, you can see I've got this upright P wave in AVF. So there is an underlying sinus rhythm. For those normal beats, we do have a normal PR interval. So that PR is less than 100 or 200 milliseconds. So that means there's no AV blocks. And so let's figure out, um, actually let's take a look at our QRS axis. Our QRS is upright in lead one. It's upright in lead one down in AVF. So that means that it is going up and to the left. So we've got some leftward deviation. And so we think of leftward deviation, what could cause leftward deviation? Maybe so hypertrophy. If we look for left ventricular hypertrophy in the lateral leads, it doesn't look like we have it. So um, let's figure out what else could be causing this person's issues. So let's, let's first try to figure out what these funky beats are. They appear to be wide complex. So if you look at the QRS width, if I zoom in here at lead three, they appear to be wide. Right, if you look here, wide, wide. If you just look throughout these funky beats here, wide. So the funky beats are wide. So we need to figure out are these are these premature ventricular or atrial contractions. So I look in front of them throughout various leads to see do I see any P waves here? And when I look, I don't see P waves that are driving the QRSs. And so there's no P waves, it's a wide complex QRS. These are premature ventricular contractions in the form of this right here would be a couplet. Couplet. Right, so any two in a row, this is a couplet. And so let's take a look now and scan through our leads for our ST and T wave abnormalities. We can look for pathological Q waves. And what you're gonna notice is if I look in my inferior leads, I've got some ST elevation. So here's my baseline and here's my ST segment. So that's ST elevation in lead three, AVF, ST, elevation here. Lead two has just maybe a little bit less, but some elevation. It appears we've, we're starting to see some reciprocal changes as well. We've got some maybe ST depression in V5, ST depression in V4. 
And so now, if you look even closer, you see in these inferior leaves that have the elevation, what are we starting to notice? Well, we're starting to notice these deep Q waves, which in other words is a pathological Q wave. The pathological Q waves are just when the ventricular depolarization is depolarizing away from that region because there has been a previous MI and that tissue is now fibrosed, it's dead, it's unable to conduct signal, so you get signal going away from it. And so that's the cause of these Q waves are the cause of what we were saying earlier, our left axis deviation, because we're having we have had a previous inferior infarction. So the signal is going away from the inferior aspect of the myocardium. More so the right on lead three. And so our axis is going to deviate to the other direction, to the left. And so in the setting of these pathological QAs, you know, we I would love to compare them to the previous EKGs because this person might be completing their infarction. We often see premature ventricular contractions occurring. These often occur and are an ominous sign at the end of a myocardial infarction because uh, this fibrous ischemic tissue is very proarrhythmic. And so if you've noticed, these couplets are back to back, very close to each other, and are. Um, you know, definitely something that we would worry about for someone to go into maybe ventricular tachycardia from some of this proarrhythmic ventricular um, cardiac cells. So, what's the diagnosis on this EKG? We've got a sinus rhythm. It's got left axis deviation. We've got ST elevation. We've got ST elevation in the inferior leads with reciprocal changes. We've got premature ventricular contractions and inferior pathological Q waves. So, hope this helps. Have a great day.